Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this one right here. This is called God of War, the card game. This is a game designed by Alex Alternu and Fel Barrows from Come On Games. And uh, it is basically a deck building cooperative game where you're trying to go through and it's got some great artwork from the video game of course and uh so let's go ahead and get down to the table i'll show you how it works and we'll come back with some final thoughts in just a few moments let's get to it so god of war the card game is a cooperative deck building game where uh, players are going to have their own deck of cards to start with and then they're going to be able to upgrade their decks using these different cards that are flipped over for scene activations uh, later on in each round. The way that you win the game is by uh, successfully completing two uh, scenes and then defeating a final boss. The way this works is that if you defeat this scene, you can choose one of these two scenes uh, to be the next one. Let's say you choose Alfheim to be the next one, then you'll have a hindrance that will take effect before that scene actually begins. If you defeat this, then you can choose from one of the three bosses here. If you're able to defeat two scenes and a final boss you win the game but if at any time if you succumb to a losing condition of a scene that game will end and you've lost or if you have uh, both or all of your characters knocked down at any given point throughout the scene then you also have lost at that point too. Each round of the game, however, is taken up with five different phases. The first phase is where you're going to draw up your hand of seven cards. Seven is the base number of amount. You may be able to have some effects in the scene, or some of these cards give you extra cards, and some of them may take those cards away from you. So it just depends on uh, what happens during the course of the game, but your basic hand size is seven. Then you move on to the activation phase where your players will be able to move during the different uh, throughout the different columns that are represented by the different scenes. You can play action cards out of your hand uh, to attack the different uh, characters, bad guys that are out there. You can also use your character card to interact with the different parts of the scene. Uh, then you'll also be able to use your rage ability if it has been activated like such, and we'll talk about that in a little bit later. You can also interact with different parts of the scene. Uh, for example, these white rectangles here that have a little bit of a glowing white uh, border are places where you can interact by doing certain things. For example, this one, if you spend a melee or a ranged attack card, you'll be able to place one fire token on this uh, fire pile. You can do that over here as well if you're in that column. Then after each person's turn, they're going to flip a card which will uh, use a rune that is up at the top of the card to denote what part of the scene will activate and then the next person will take their turn and so forth and so on. Uh, after every player's turn, you're going to activate the scene. So that's the next thing. And then there is an extra activation phase. After everyone has taken their turn, another card will be flipped. Uh, so it's basically the scene will activate a number of times equal to the number of players in the game plus one each round. Then there is an upgrade phase where the activation cards that were used to activate the scene here will be able to be chosen by the different players to go into their deck, thus upgrading their deck, making it a little bit more powerful. You can also call a card from your discard pile or your hand if you don't want to take either any of these cards as an upgrade. Finally, you'll check to see if there is a winning or a losing condition, and then once you have determined that, if you have, uh, if neither of those have been met, you simply go on to another round. Now, to further explain the different elements of the scene here, I want to just to uh, take a few moments and do that. Uh, you'll have, first of all, enemies that you'll have to defeat. This icon means that this is how many life points they have. This is the kind of attack they're going to wager against the heroes and that's how much damage that they'll do. And this is a special case attack where they're going to actually put poison uh, into a player character. So if a 
enemy attacks you with poison, this card is added to your deck. And then when this card comes up, you have to do what it says, and then it goes away. Now, with ranged attacks, that simply means that this character is going to, or rather this enemy, is going to attack the furthest column away, but they will always attack the person in front. So, with that being said, each column has a first place, um, or a front row, and then a back row behind it, but only the person that is in the front will ever be attacked by anything, whether it's a melee attack or a ranged attack. Melee attacks will have arrows of direction, which will tell you what spaces or what columns are going to be affected by that attack. So this enemy here has a health of five hit points, but they're going to do a melee attack of two, which will attack this column, this column, and that column. And then finally, this ranged attack up here, uh, this person has to be attacked with a ranged attack, and they have a hit points of three, but their ranged attack, just like this one over here, will uh, target the front space in the furthest column away from it. You do have these interaction uh, rectangles here and here with the white border outlining them. Other boxes that have a colored border, which will take effect if that rune is drawn during the scene activation phase. So for example, if this rune is drawn, this will not fire off. But if this rune is drawn, then this will fire off, as well as this here uh, at the same time. But over here, you have a blue border, which means that if this rune is drawn, then this will take effect. Not this, but just this down here that has the blue border. Then you also have other static elements of the scene, like this one right here, where it says, for example, when all enemies are defeated, you simply flip all of these six cards. So the four top cards here, and then the two central ones down here will flip over, revealing what's on their side. So as we get started here, Kratos is going to go first since he has the first player token here. And so now during his activation, he can move once during his turn. Uh, and he can do that before an attack, after an attack, whatever, he, before an activation, uh, I mean, uh, interact, whatever it is. But he can only move once during the course of his turn. So uh, right now he's going to uh, stay put uh, and try to attack this enemy here because we really don't want to have a lot of poison cards in our deck. So getting this person knocked out first is probably a better idea. Uh, but he, they do have 15 hit points, so we got to hit them pretty hard. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to make a ranged attack. Now ranged attacks are a little bit more powerful because they can attack melee or or range, so the bottom row or the top row, uh, whereas a melee attack like this one right here can only attack enemies that are on the bottom row. So there you have that. So we're going to make this ranged attack, which is going to, uh, with this symbol here, raise my rage meter, and then we're going to add some bonus cards to it. So this is just a basic attack right now of zero, but now we have plus two and plus three, and plus two, so that is seven, and then we've got eight, nine, and now they're going to roll the defense die to see how much of that is blocked, uh, and so one is blocked, so I had seven, eight, nine, so that means that eight uh, damage goes on to uh, this enemy like so. With that attack over, I now have the opportunity to move to another uh, place if I want to. So uh, what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to move over here and protect Atreus because I'm going to go into the front uh, and protect him so that if this guy attacks or if this person attacks or if this person up here attacks because these guys will both fire on the same activation, I'll be able to take that damage and Atreus won't because Atreus does have fewer hit points than me, so I want to do as much to protect him as possible. But with that being said, that's going to be the end of my turn because this attack probably won't do that much good, but this stays in my hand for right now. And now we're going to uh, have a scene activation card flip over. So this will come out here like this. And the, uh, that rune is going to be what triggers on the scene. So we look down here and down here, it says this, it says remove a fire token if 
uh, the three slots are empty, then we go ahead and flip this card. So right now, all that's going to do is remove one of these tokens, uh, and that'll be it, which is kind of bad because we need to keep these two uh, fire piles from being extinguished. So that wasn't that bad, but we're going to go ahead and go on with Atreus' turn now. And he has a couple of things going on. So uh, he's going to try to attack up here with this ranged person. And uh, let's see, we're going to go ahead and start with uh, the uh, a ranged attack. So that moves up one there. And then we also have uh, plus two plus three, plus four, um, and that's all we can do. Now, if he doesn't have enough defense, that's going to knock him out. So it's four minus zero, so it does four damage to this person. Uh, these uh, will be discarded, which means that this guy is now toast, and we don't have to worry about him anymore when this rune comes up. Now, I do have more cards in my hand than Kratos did, uh, I have some pretty good defense, so I'm going to go stand in front and protect Dad uh, so that um, he doesn't have to take any damage because I've got some defense cards in my hand uh, to go with. So we're going to go ahead and do that. That goes there. Another scene activation happens, and so it is now this one right here, which means that this will happen, which means this person here will attack. He will attack uh, three away, which, good thing, I kept those uh, cards because we have uh, three defense, so we can block that and the effects don't happen. And so now uh, we will go ahead and discard our cards uh, like so. They are no longer useful. And one more scene activation happens. So now this rune takes place, which is pretty bad because uh, that fires off this and this. Uh, so it says, this one says, all other enemies heal all their damage. Well, it's a good thing we knocked this guy out and we didn't hit anything here. So that doesn't actually have an effect because it says all other enemies, not this one, just these two guys would heal. But this one down here, it says, remove a fire token from this pile. So that will come away as well. So that's not a bad turn. At this point, uh, Kratos and Atreus are going to be able to upgrade. So they're going to choose to do this one. Uh, Kratos is going to go ahead and take this plus two. And it goes onto the top of his deck. And then it looks like... Um, we're going to go ahead, Atreus is going to go ahead and take this one and add it to the top of his deck. And then that will be the turn. This one, since it did not get chosen, simply gets put at the bottom of the upgrade deck like so. Now we check to see if there are any winning or losing conditions. There aren't. And so we go to our next preparation phase where both characters will draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. And then the first player marker will rotate over to Atreus, and we go through another round. And this is how the game continues until you have finished one, two scenes, and defeated one of the bosses. If you're able to do that without reaching any of the losing conditions for any of the scenes and not having a spot where all of the players are knocked down at once, you've won. If any of those other conditions are met, though, you've lost. And that's how you play God of War, the card game. So that's about that for God of War, the card game from Come On Games. Now, as I used in the explanation point where we use Kratos and Atreus uh, as the two characters, but you do also have uh, three other characters that you can be. You can be Freya, uh, you can be Mirmir, uh, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, or you can be Brock and Sindri. Uh, so if you're familiar with the video game, you know who these people are. On top of that, there are also uh, solo mode uh, variations of these three characters as well. So you do have the opportunity to do solo mode uh, in this game as well. Icons probably will be a little bit of a difficulty, but those are all right there uh, from time to time that you can use as a reference during the course of the game. So uh, all that being said, I did enjoy the game, but let's get to why with my pros and cons. 
So my first pro of this game is, first of all, the fact that it is cooperative in nature. I like cooperative games. They uh, provide camaraderie at the very beginning of the game that everybody can kind of latch on to. There's no competition. There's no posturing or anything like that. We're all trying to work together. And I like it when games do that. And this is a great theme that... Um, this cooperative game is wrapped up in. I really enjoy the theme. I think it's a beautifully designed game as far as the artwork is concerned. We'll get to that in just a moment. But right now we're talking about the cooperative nature of the game, the fact that it's deck building. I haven't really been too hot on deck building games. They're fine. They're just not all that in a bag of chips for me personally. So that part was okay. I didn't uh, dislike it. But the thing that really brought this game to the limelight for me was the fact that it was a cooperative deck builder. You're not competing with people. You're working together to figure out how to defeat each scene. Now, my second pro of the game is that artwork that I was just talking about. For me, I've always said it, uh, when a game looks better, it's just simply more fun because it's easier to wrap yourself up in the theme. It's easier to immerse yourself there. And so it just makes it more fun because you're dealing with a game that looks great on the table. And that is definitely what's going on here. Each of the different scenes are double-sided cards. And so each scene has eight cards. Some of the scenes, uh, one of the scenes has actually 12 cards because you start with one specific scene with just four cards. And then once you've defeated that part, you turn over eight different cards, which makes up the continuation of that scene. So it's really cool that way. But the art work is really, really good. The graphic design of the cards, the iconography that is used, I did mention the icon reference here, but after a couple of plays, the iconography on the cards is really intuitive, and it doesn't take that much um, brain power, I guess you could say, to remember what a certain icon is used. There's a lot of repetition uh, with each of the different scenes, so I think after your first play, you won't be. You won't have to look at this reference anymore. You'll you'll just kind of know what each symbol does, and I like that because icons make things a little bit easier during gameplay as long as they're used intuitively, and uh, there aren't a whole lot of them being employed. Uh, so I think this one uses just enough to make it interesting, uh, icons that is. Uh, but then they're all intuitive, so they make sense. You don't have to reference that uh, sheet very often. So that's great as well. So the artwork graphic design here, really good, two thumbs up. Now the third pro for me is that there is uh, variable player powers in the game. Everybody has their own specific deck, which is different than everybody else's. Uh, Freya's deck is, is a, there's a lot of uh, defense and there's a lot of healing in it to very begin to at the very beginning and her power also helps with healing and avoiding damage so I like that uh, Kratos is of course he's just the tank he's there to take a lot of hits he's there to deal a lot of damage uh, Atreus is somewhere in the middle but he has a lot of ranged attacks in his deck so everybody has their own kind of thing that they do and uh, that's just great because it means that they're, they represent a specific cog in the machine that you're going to use to defeat the game. And I love that when variable player powers are used. The rage powers actually just kind of adds to that because the rage powers, once you have it powered up, you, you fire it off and it's something really cool that only you can do. And I like it when games do that. So the variable player powers, each, piece, each person having their own starting deck, really great idea. The fourth pro for me is the fact that uh, the scene activation was... Uh, random, I guess you could use that word, but it also had an intelligence that was there. It didn't feel like you were just um, fighting these paper cutouts every single time you play the game. The way the activation cards come up and the runes that are used uh, to activate the scene are... Uh, I know it's not. There's probably a lot of uh, formula... There was a lot of formulaic problem solving that went into making you know, how many different times each rune uh, appears in that activation deck. I get it, um, but it feels random, and it feels like you're you're fighting this AI that uh, really wants to defeat you. And, it, and it's great because it takes the place of a dungeon master, so to speak, that might play 
too heavily um, uh, in, in trying to win on his own. So I like the fact that this card activation system with the runes and everything um, works so well, in my opinion. And I really enjoyed it. It made it um, fresh. Each new scene uh, provided a different level, I guess you could say, of difficulty or complexity uh, that uh, is refreshing, I guess you could say. You don't have to wonder what's going to happen. You just flip the card and that tells you what happens. And I like that level of um, ease that's in the, the enemy activation part of the game. So it's, it's a pro for me. So with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and talk about a couple of the cons that I have uh, with the game. And one of, one of them is small and one of them is a little bit larger, but we'll talk about the smaller one first. And that is the hindrances that you have to face uh, when you choose one scene over another or a final boss over another. And these are simply just things that you're going to have to overcome. More often than not, it's discard this kind of card or this many cards out of your deck uh, before you start the next scene. It, it's hindrances like that uh, for the most part. Uh, and I, I thought that was kind of, um, I don't know, I just didn't like it that much because you could have worked really hard getting certain upgrade cards into your deck during the last scene. And then the hindrance for the next scene is, oh yeah, just get rid of those cards that you worked so hard to get. Uh, so I, I understand it's kind of a balancing factor. Maybe you, uh, maybe they wanted to make it to where you weren't too powerful once you reach the final boss. But I don't know, just having get rid of cards or stuff like that, I didn't like that kind of hindrance. So it's a light con for me. It doesn't bother me that much. I just didn't like it. Uh, so it's a con. And the other con that I had for the game, what well, has to do with the rule book and how vague it is in certain spots. Um, I think if you just use the rule book, you'll be able to play the game, but you won't understand some of the things that the rule book kind of takes for granted. And, and sometimes it's just, you know, a sentence added here or um, a couple of words added here for clarification. It's that kind of stuff that the rule book was missing. The first time I played the game, it was at Come On Expo with the designer. He and I went through a two-player version of it, and that was like almost a year before Roy and I tried to, you know, bring it out and play it again. And then we we played it uh, live, and we just really made a lot of mistakes with that. Uh, so I had to contact the designer again to ask him some questions about, you know, I asked him to watch the video that we posted. What did we do wrong? Because we definitely felt like we were doing something wrong, but I know I had read the rule book, and, but there were just parts... In, in the scenes that we ran into that that weren't really explained well in the rule book. And, you know, fortunately, I had the opportunity to contact the designer, but most of you guys aren't going to be able to do that. So um, I, I brought that to light with the designer, and he was very appreciative of that, and he's going to start working on a FAQ for the rule book. And so I'm, I'm glad to have helped there, but at the same time, I have to say that this rule book isn't as good as it could have been. I think you'll be able to play the game, but uh, hopefully with the employee of, of this video maybe and, and other videos that are going to be made for it, you'll be able to uh, hash out some of those things while they're working on the FAQ page. And again, it's not that it's a necessarily a bad rule book. I don't want to put it that way. It's just that there were certain parts that, that I felt were a little crucial that were just vague. So with all that being said, um, I'm going to give uh, God of War an 8.5 out of 10. And the reason I'm giving it that extra half is because I really do enjoy the game. And I think that once they get that FAQ page done, this is is going to be a great fun game for a lot of people especially if you enjoy uh, the video game now myself personally I've never played the video game so I can't talk about how uh, similar it might be but the artwork that's employed the quality of the components all of that kind of stuff is really really good and I think it's a great buy so that's it for me an 8.5 8 out of 10 uh, for God of War the card game thanks for joining me I certainly appreciate it we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side take care
Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.